What a fantastic year 2013 has been for the sport, the world of rowing. Best ever world championships in my opinion in South Korea, Chunju. Amazing facilities, beautiful course, really great racing too. I think really significant that that happened in Southeast Asia. That's an area of our sport which is going to grow and grow. It's a really important market and I think that was a great step. As was I think the uh, Rowing World Cup in Sydney in March, another good step. I think it showed that the world's top athletes will come down to Australia given the right conditions. It's going to happen again in 2014. There needs to be things put in place that that can continue to be the case, but I think certainly very, very worthy and important for the sport. Another thing too, the Europeans. What a great time to have that regatta. Early season, fantastic atmosphere, brilliant racing, very high standard. I thought the camaraderie there was superb. I didn't miss the British crews just one little bit. I think they probably suffered from not attending, which might be why they're going to be there in Belgrade in, in 2014. But a great step forward for the sport and the television and the profile of, of the sport too. And a major change has been the significance of a new president. Jean-Christophe Bollon will be the new president, replacing uh, Denis Oswald, who's been there for, what, 25 years now. And I think uh, Roland is the person to lead FISA forward. We've already seen how FISA needs to react to a rapidly changing situation in uh, the world of sport. The new IOC president, Thomas Bach, and the, the pressure coming from them to change the quota numbers. So certainly women now have gone up from, in rowing from around about 36, 37% to 40%. And that will change the 2016 program. It will mean that different numbers of crews have to qualify. But I think that's all to the good. And I foresee that more women will get into the Olympic program. And I think the Olympic program will have to change and adapt as a result. I think Jean Christophe is the man to take those measures through. There's been little things that I've liked through the year as well. I love watching that uh, all star Tideway Scullers crew with Alice Skandar, Alice Skandrov, uh, Britain's Alan Campbell, Andre Sinek and uh, uh, Valent Sinkovic, the Croatian strokeman, just massacre everybody uh, on the Thames and the head of the river, sort of 20 minute race. They were just outstanding. It's great to see those multinational crews come together. So there's a lot about the sport, the camaraderie involved and uh, long may that continue. I know the head of the Charles uh, provides a, a similar opportunity. Uh, Kiwi pair, once again, what a year they've had, unbeaten, emerged on top. Really, it's hard to see anyone else uh, as crew of the year apart from the two New Zealanders. I know perhaps that is frustrating for some rowers who feel that Kiwi pair are pretty good at uh, publicising themselves, but I'd say good luck to them. Uh, amazing they do set the standards, that 608 is still right up there and that's what anyone has to aspire to if they, they want to be that good in the world of rowing. And uh, it's interesting to see, isn't it, that uh, at the end of the year, the two Kiwis, Eric Murray, set that world record for the half marathon distance at an incredible pulse rate, something like mid-190s for over an hour. And uh, Hamish Bond on the uh, static concept to set the world record of, what is it, over 18,400 metres. Um, and his pulse up in the 170s for that distance. Uh, amazing uh, physiologies, those two guys. But of course, there's been other fantastic performances. For me, I think the Lithuanian women's double scholar of Milga Vakdukaite and Dona Vista Tate has been sensational. They burst on the scene in the Europeans. Phenomenal performance there. And wow, what a series of races. Lucerne, it was something like uh, two hundredths of a second the distance that they beat the Kiwis by, uh, Zoe Stevenson, Fiona Borg, and then just four hundredths of a second in that amazing race in South Korea. Six hundredths of a second over the two races, what a series. And I, fact, I think the fact that Milda Vakikate has, has been a junior what just, just last year has come into the sport, says a lot about our sport, the possibilities. Also, it's great to see crews from Eastern Europe doing that well. And I think that's a real, real bonus for the sport. Other crews, other standout crews, of course they're there. We've seen uh, the, the Dane, Henrik Stephenson, uh, amazing guy. The German women's quad, the American women's eight world record. Boring that it's the Americans that win all the time. But, you know, they are a fantastic crew. And that is an amazing world record. The Dutch men's four, fantastic. The way they came through at the Europeans and the world's. 
British women's pair change 50% of the crew. Helen Glover, the one consistent. For me, that's the top British crew. And then Kimmy Crow, the Australian women's single sculler. Just phenomenal the way that she coped with her opposition this year. Probably for me, I think Andre Sinek, absolute standout performance. I mean, he, he really was in unbeatable form and he does look to be making that case that, uh, you know, he is the one to beat for 2016. Um, there's been some other crews like the Norwegian men's double skull and the outstanding performance of Lars Johan Flodin in coaching them and, and the lightweights to victory. So overall, that's been fantastic. Some things that perhaps haven't gone quite so well, television coverage at Lucerne, men's eights final, we didn't get any pictures for the first 500 metres, and that was a great race too. Um, technical problems, I think, uh, are, the, are the cause of that. But then again, there were some fantastic pictures from Eton. One big standout, I think, to look forward to next season is that Nearly, there was a lot of meetings going on at Eton Dorney in the Second World Cup because of the unfair conditions. Were there going to be time trials for the finals? And people were saying, you just can't have time trials for the finals. And I think World Rowing, conscious of the problems in the Olympics, are saying we've got to have fair racing. It emerged there's no television plan for televising uh, sort of single time trials. Uh, the proposal was made to put two abreast and possibly have that. But, the sport didn't know how to televise it. It needs to be an option, quite frankly, because the course on the Bosman, where the World Championships are in 2014, is known for being potentially unfair. And therefore, time trials may be a realistic, or they may have to run time trials in some of the finals there if the course is unfair across, across that uh, regatta lake. So, lots to think about for coming season. I can't wait to 2014 championships in Egg Ballet should be great. Have a happy Christmas, good new year, see you in 2014.